Okay, let's pick it up with controllers. And I'm going to check out step three. Do a get K here. And what I've done here was I've run the Grails uh, create controller command with the um, full path of what I want, which I'm putting under admin, which uh, will become a clear a little later uh, because I'm actually showing you uh, two different uh, sets of controllers. I'm going to show you uh, dynamic scaffolding and then uh, you know more normal controllers. So let's close this and we're going to go to controllers which I put under the admin. Open the project controller and what I've set up here is static scaffold equals the domain class that I want to scaffold and what this will do for you is auto automatically generate up scaffolding for you uh, for doing uh, cred based work like uh, create, update, delete and things of that nature. So what I'm going to do now just to show you that is I'm going to run that um, and before I do that I'm going to show you in the init um, I showed you this before the application class, which you could just right click and do run, which will automatically create up a run uh, configuration for you. And uh, in here you can, you know, put any overrides, uh, VM options, program arguments, or environment variables you need, depending on how complex your program has gotten. Uh, for this, we don't really need that, so I'm just going to close out of here and I'm going to select that and I'm going to run the application. So we'll just wait for the application to get up and running here. And we'll click on that which will show you the application which I showed you earlier running from the Grails uh, run app command and what you'll notice now is we actually have the controllers displayed here so uh, we'll click on the project controller and we have this basic crud like display we can create a new project uh, type in some various things in here uh, one thing to note is I know this is going to fail on me because there's something wrong in this branch. So when I do create, uh, it's not going to do the show. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, I'll have to figure that out later. But it's fixed in a later branch and we'll come back and this will actually work. But you see the project list and you know basically like I said you can do the basic CRUD operations. If I was able to get to the show you would be able to see the delete command. but for some reason that's not working in this branch. So we'll close that. Stop this from running. And basically we're going to go here and I'm going to do a get checkout of step four which I generated up uh, controllers and views. And what I did, what I what I actually found that I did, uh, if you look into the get K, is I actually committed the same commit message twice. So it didn't have uh, this, which is what I used for the command, which was the Grails generate all, and I gave it the domain class that I wanted to use. So we'll take that out of here. But uh, basically, what I was able to do with that was. Uh, We'll actually go into the get K now, show you get K. It's uh, basically generated up that uh, dynamic scaffolding for me uh, in a way that allows me to actually go in and change the individual pieces rather than it being uh, dynamic. Now it's actually static scaffolding. So I have uh, controllers which it created, uh, you know, with uh, you know, various implementation in it. Uh, GSPs, which I, I mentioned, are the views, and uh, then uh, unit tests as well for the controllers. 
Now, as I said before, in general, I'm not a big fan of writing unit tests for controllers, but it generates them up for you anyways. Uh, so does when you do the uh, create uh, controller command. It'll generate up a uh, spec for you. So if you want to test it, you can. Uh, I would say that there shouldn't be a lot of you know logic in the controllers for you to test. Uh, that should be relegated to uh, services, but it is there if you do decide you want to unit test your controllers. So let's close this and actually go open one of these controllers. And you'll see a whole bunch of things in here. Now, some of this is it's marking it because, you know, the IDE doesn't know what it is. And that's kind of par for the course with uh, a lot of uh, dynamic languages is there are certain things that uh, the IDE hasn't caught up with yet, uh, as I kind of mentioned, which is the reason why I decided not to use 3.1 for this. Um, but let's go through this. So... One, uh, another thing that I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, with this is it put all the logic in the controller rather than making a service for some of this logic, and it's using the transactional uh, annotation here, which this is an AST transform, uh, rather than moving this trans transform into a service. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have this uh, static. Uh, allowed methods which tells you uh, what methods are allowed per action and these uh, all these uh, methods are actions uh, in general uh, while I know there is a method in here a protected method in general I wouldn't put a lot of extra methods in here I would you know basically delegate them out to services which I'll show in a future video um, but uh, any method you, uh, any like public method that you put in here will become an action uh, that you can actually call, uh, that can be called through the URLs. And this uh, allowed methods is just uh, to kind of lock those down so that, you know, you couldn't do, uh, say, for save, you couldn't do a get request to save. Um, it's kind of... Uh, a security like feature I would say uh, pen tests will look for stuff like this especially on login that you know you should only be doing posts you know there, there are reasons and stuff for, for that but uh, not for this talk all right so moving on uh, if you see the show method here this is actually taking a project object now, what Grails does, uh, I think since uh, Grails 2.3, was it allowed you to use uh, domain objects as command objects. Command objects uh, were a way for you to bind uh, an object to the parameters that were coming in. And basically, if you had uh, that slash ID, which, uh, let's see, in controllers let's look at the URL mappings if you had like controller slash action slash ID it would actually take this ID uh, for the domain class that I have set up here and it'll actually auto look up and populate this object so you'll actually you know automatically have it uh, it uses uh, respond here which is uh, I guess this has become one of the the newer ways uh, to deal with, uh, you know, responding back to the client. Uh, there are other ways which I'm going to show you, uh, like using render, which I'm I'm more familiar with. But uh, this works with, you know, uh, based on a similar premise. But it allows you to also uh, respond with not only JSON but XML, depending on the I think the format that they put. So you know, if they do a dot JSON or a dot um, XML they can get different formats uh, and by default it just uses JSON um, as far as I recall so let's see uh, 
Moving on, uh, let's see, what else do I want to talk about while I'm here? Um, also, within each controller, you have access to params, so any parameters that you set in, uh, that have been sent in, you can pass along. Uh, or you know take out and validate uh, usually uh, it's good to use the uh, you know I'd say it would be good to use the validation that's in your domain classes uh, you know for validation so load your domain classes up and have it do its validation uh, but there are times where you know you know if you didn't have uh, like a custom validator or maybe you wanted to do something specific for cross-site scripting or stuff like that you might want to actually check the parameter in a different way uh, this will give you access to that uh, you also have access to the request I think just by um, typing the request and you have access to the request object so if there's anything in there that you want to get at it's you know at your disposal um, and a lot of these uh, particular um, things that you have access to uh, are added using what are known as either traits or uh, AST transforms uh, a lot has been moved uh, from AST transforms to traits in Grails 3 just for maintainability and so, you know, one of the things you might be thinking is, oh, there's a lot of magic going on here. How, uh, you know, how do I even know what's going on here? So one of the things that you can do, uh, and I've set up a actual run config for this. I'm going to go to edit the run config. And just so I can show you. So... If you run the Grails console, which will actually pop up an instance of the Groovy console, and I'm just going to run that right now. And I'm just going to select this and copy it while it's running. And eventually that will pop up here. Okay, any minute now. Oh, whoops. That's why it's not running, because I ran the application and not the console. That might help. And all right, there it goes. So one thing I found with running this uh, the Groovy console is I wasn't able to actually open any files from this. Uh, I don't know if that's something that happened in Grails three or not, but what I can do is paste in the class that I had before. And one th something else that's built in here is the inspect AST. So this is usually used for um, checking out uh, AST transforms, debugging them, and stuff like that. But if you go through, uh, there's like you can look at it at any point of the compilation uh, that it has and see what code has actually been generated. So this allows you to go through and see the code that's actually been generated and injected into your controller for you. So, you know, this allows you to demystify and see what actually happens to your code that Groovy and Grails does to it so that you can, you know, just understand it a little bit more. Um, and this is all the code. It's not necessarily the prettiest because it's been kind of Javified a little bit more, um, but uh, you know, like I said, this could be useful for you. So, no, I don't want to save changes. So, 
that's pretty much uh, controllers. Um, the other things that you will see here are these forms, which I haven't been, I haven't used that much. Which this is something a little bit newer to me. Um, and as I said, the responds. And but I'm going to be talking about uh, some other ways to to work with this in uh, the next video. So till then.